Hey, what up everybody? This is Steve Bridge coming to you. Uh, this is the first video I've done for my living room, uh, I believe, in two years, maybe three, since I did my Christmas Spectacular picking the future champions of WWE, where I picked three wrestlers, where two of the wrestlers no longer work for WWE, and the one guy that was on my list was Michael McGillicuddy, who uh, is Curtis Axel now, who looks like he is a big-time failure. But I um, thought we'd talk about the No Surrender uh pay-per-view super card free show on Spike TV this weekend. Uh, overall, the only thing they've really announced to us is uh, four matches uh, for the show, but it's going to be a big show, no surrender. Uh, they're going to be uh, showing us who's going to be going to uh, Bound for Glory as the number one contender for TNA as they uh, figure out their Bound for Glory series, which uh, the tournament this year ultimately was a pretty big fail. Um, this year, I think the second year was the, the best year that they really planned the thing out. This year, it seemed like they had a whole bunch of, uh, special gimmick matches with, uh, you know, battle royals and ladder matches and just random four guys in matches to get 20 points. They did have a lot of singles matches, but not everyone, everybody wrestled as advertised. Um, I think everybody only got six matches in singles competition, and there were ultimately supposed to get 11. Uh, so this year, the uh, ultimately, TNA didn't plan it out this well. They've had some pretty shaky booking where they've been, uh, basically, they've been real good for a couple weeks and then fell off for a couple weeks and then got good for one and then bad the second. And ultimately, for a long time, I always thought the TNA's live show always came off real well in the second show. Mostly, I, I said it was the crowd that wasn't into it, uh, really wasn't going for it. But um, in the... Um, Bound for Glory series, uh, last two matches you have in the semifinals, AJ Styles, who won the whole deal, uh, he picked the, that he wanted to fight Austin Aries in the first round, seeing how Austin Aries was his toughest competition that was in the show, and Austin Aries is one of the guys who beat him in the Bound for Glory series matches, so he wanted to get that win back. AJ Styles came out and did his little shoot interview that was basically pretty bad, and, um, basically spelled out that he was the guy for the company. He, he might as well have said that he's the guy who's been picked to go on and win this deal. There's a little bit in the back of my mind that is saying that Austin Aries still has a shot to win this deal, but um, the whole time I thought the whole Bound for Glory series was built around AJ Styles being the guy coming out of his shell and beating Bully Ray at Bound for Glory. Uh, sort of making AJ... I don't even think the whole time they've had the... TNA World Heavyweight Championship. I know he's been champion for TNA before, but since they've had this belt, I don't even think that they've put the belt on AJ before. He's been like sort of like a second fiddle, or maybe like Rob Van Dam for ECW. Like even though Rob Van Dam was the biggest star of ECW, he was never anything more than the TV champion. Um, this will be the first time that I think AJ's won uh, this version of the title. How it's you know was the NWA title to the TNA title to the TNA uh, World Heavyweight title. I mean, the last title that he's held in the last few years was that television title uh, when they uh, changed the name. When he, when he think he beat, when he didn't he beat Booker T for the Legends title, and that's when they changed the name of it. That thing didn't really work out that well, which eventually became another belt, which became another belt, so then now it's faded away. Uh, and there's the second match. It's uh, Magnus going up against Bobby Roode. I'm gonna pick. Um, it wouldn't make much sense to have two faces go at it, but I guess they sort of have two faces in the first match. I want to pick Magnus to win this match, mostly because the Bound for Glory series has been coming out, like the Magnus coming out party, and he's been booked to the moon the whole time. Uh, I'll take, um, I'll pick Magnus uh, to do the second round, and then, you know, basically the finals match will be AJ versus Magnus. I don't see any, you know, suspicious activity from either one of these guys, but obviously... Um, the members of uh, Ace and Eights will be involved, and um, there'll be some shenanigans. Uh, basically, AJ will overcome the odds and uh, win the whole deal. I think Bully Ray would probably want to fight Magnus before he fought AJ Styles, but basically AJ to win the whole Bound for Glory series. And then basically your main event of the night, which I don't even think will be the main event because you'll probably have the two Bound for Glory series is then you'll have this one, and then I, I would bet the Bound for Glory series match will close out the show with Bully Ray being out there from being involved in the match, and then Bully Ray and AJ have the face-off that ends the show. 
Um, but uh, you have Ace and Eights members going at it. Bully Ray versus Mr. Anderson. We have to under get you know into this and see is this going to be you know some sort of rouge that they've been planning the whole time to sort of trick Hogan, or has Mr. Anderson been under Hogan's thumb the whole time, and Hogan's actually you know driven a wedge between the Ace and Eights members, and this is actually a breakup? Is you know. They, are, are they going to go out there and have a Shawn Michaels versus Triple H style match where they just bounce off the ropes? Or maybe they can't even really do that, though. I've been thinking that's what they might do, but they just did this a couple weeks ago uh, with Bad Influence with um, Daniels and Kazarian having their match and then just basically taking the count out so they both get two points and they move on and further in themselves without hurting each other in the tournament, outsmarting everybody, so they can't even really do that, I know this isn't a Bound for Glory series match, but you can't have a fake match, because they just did that two to three weeks ago, so this has to be some sort of a breakup, so maybe, you know, Bully Ray's obviously going to beat Mr. Anderson, Mr. Anderson and Ace and Eights is a geek, Mr. Anderson outside of Ace and Eights is going to be a super geek, he's, you know, you saw where he placed in the Bound for Glory series, which isn't really a pecking order of who's who in the TNA company, but, you know, I think he finished 6th place or 8th place, one or the other, so that puts him behind AJ, Magnus, it puts him behind Jeff Hardy, Robert Roode, you know, he's way down the list, I think he's a good player for TNA, and I wish he was a guy that found his way back to WWE somehow, because I think that they could find a way to use his pluses more than I think TNA does, but, um, obviously Bully Ray to get the win, does he stay in Ace and Eights or not? Ace and Eights becomes awfully weak if he doesn't win. Or if he doesn't stay. I say he gets beat, but he stays. That's my guess. Alright. Peace out, everybody. Have fun.